Hi, this is Mrs. Basden, and today we're going to talk about mixtures of gases. Many samples of gases consist of a mixture of gases. So according to the kinetic molecular theory, like we talked about, each of these components or each individual gas in the gas mixture is going to act independent of the others. So the pressure due to any of these components or any of these individual gases is referred to as the partial pressure. The sum of all of those partial pressures has to equal the total pressure that the gases are exerting. So this is known as Dalton's law of partial pressure. So to calculate a partial pressure or a total pressure, depending on what you're given, you take the total pressure, and that has to be equal to the partial pressures of each of those individual gases. So the one, the two, the three, those would all be individual gases within that mixture of gases. So this is what one of these would look like. So it says we have a mixture of helium, neon, and argon, and this mixture has a total pressure of 558 millimeters of mercury. If the partial pressure of helium is 341 millimeters of mercury, and the partial pressure of neon is 112 millimeters of mercury, what is the partial pressure of argon? So just like before, we're gonna make a list. So it says our total pressure, so our P total equals 558, mmHg, and then it tells me the pressure of helium is 341 mmHg, partial pressure of neon is 112. I want to know what the partial pressure of argon is. That's what I'm solving for. So we're going to set this up using Dalton's law. The total equals the pressure of helium plus the pressure of neon plus the pressure of argon. So then I'm gonna substitute in the values I know. The one thing you have to be careful of is when you're subtracting from the total, they all have to be the same units. So if these had been given in three different units, you would just pick one and convert them all to that same unit. So they don't have to be in a specific unit, they just all have to be in the same unit. So this one we don't have to do that too because they were all given in millimeters of mercury. So 558 mmHg was my total. Helium was 341, neon was 112, and argon is what I'm solving for. So I'm going to subtract these from the total. So the partial pressure of argon is 105 millimeters of mercury. Sometimes it'll ask you to convert it to something else once you solve. But this one didn't specify that, so I can leave that as 105. So the other thing that can happen and end up with a mixture of gases is collecting gas over water. So when you are running a chemical reaction that produces a gas, it's often collected by water displacement. So if you look down at this picture in the corner, you can see there's a reaction happening inside the test tube. So this is similar to a reaction that you did when we did the chemical reaction lab. So when HCl and zinc react, you get hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. Okay, now this is not balanced, but just so you can see where this came from. So this is the gas that's being produced. So in the lab, you used a wooden splint to test and see if you got that squeaky pop for the hydrogen gas. So that gas just escaped into the atmosphere. If you wanted to actually collect that gas, you would set up an apparatus like you see here, where it goes into a container that's full of water, and then it displaces the water. So it pushes the water out of the container and then those hydrogen gas molecules get trapped above the water. Now the issue is water always has some water vapor molecules sitting at the surface. So when you collect a gas over water, there's always going to be water vapor mixed in with that gas. So if you want the true pressure of the gas you're collecting, you have to subtract out the pressure of the water vapor. So this is called that water vapor, the pressure that that water vapor exerts, it's called the vapor pressure. So anytime you have a situation where you're collecting this, you would have to pay attention to the temperature because the vapor pressure is temperature dependent. If there's a higher temperature, you're going to have more water vapor sitting at the surface than if it was a lower temperature. So you would be given a chart that has the vapor pressures at given temperatures. So you would use that temperature to figure out what the vapor pressure of the water was given those conditions. The total pressure would be the total pressure that both of those gases or that mixture of gases was exerting. If you just want the pressure of the gas, you would have to subtract out the pressure of the water. And we'll look at an example for that. 
So this one says, in order to determine the rate of photosynthesis, the oxygen gas emitted by an aquatic plant is collected over water at a temperature of 293K and a total pressure of 755.2 millimeters of mercury. So you may have done an experiment like this last year um, where you were looking at the rate of photosynthesis, you just didn't collect the gas that was actually produced. So I'm still going to list my variables. So it says there was a temperature of 293 Kelvin, a total pressure of 755.2 mmHg, and then a total of 1.02 liters of gas was collected. This wants to know how many moles of oxygen gas form. So if you look at the variables here, a T, a V, a P, an N, so this should tell you that you're going to need PV equals NRT to solve for moles. So we know that R value is a constant, 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Okay, now this is where what we just talked about comes into play. Anytime you see collected over water, that means that to get the pressure of the gas that you're talking about, which is oxygen in this case, you have to subtract out the vapor pressure of the water that's mixed with it. So this P total, that's the pressure of water plus the oxygen gas. If I'm gonna solve for moles over here, this moles needs to be just for oxygen. So I'm going to have to do that equation that was on the previous slide, so P total, equals the pressure of the water plus the pressure of, in this case, O2. So this is the total, 755.2. The pressure of the water, so it tells me my temperature. So my Kelvin temperature is 293. That means this is in Celsius. So my Celsius temperature, if I subtract 273, is 20 degrees Celsius. So that tells me the pressure of water is 17.5, again, millimeters of mercury, so if one up here was given in something else, you'd have to convert it, plus the pressure of O2. Okay, so I'm gonna solve this very similar to what I did with the total pressure and the mixture of gases. So my pressure of oxygen is 737 mmHg. Okay, now if you remember, if I'm using the ideal gas law, pressure has to be in ATMs. So I'm gonna have to take this, 737 mmHg and convert it to ATMs before I can put it into my ideal gas equation. Okay, so this is where you can kind of see how these can get a little tricky and you're kind of putting multiple concepts together in the same one. So that's why I said you always start with that make a list of variables and watch for these specific phrases like collected over water to kind of give you a clue on which of those formulas you're gonna use. Okay, so I'm converting my pressure of oxygen to atmosphere. This ends up being 0.971 atm. And that's my pressure of O2. So now I have a pressure, a volume, moles is what I'm looking for. I have my R value and I have my temperature. So I'm gonna sub all of those in, 0.971 atm times volume, 1.02 liters equals N, R, 0.0821 liter ATM per mole K, times temperature, 293 Kelvin. Okay, so when I solve for N, my value for N is 0 0.0412 moles of O2. Okay, so that looks like a pretty simple problem, but there's a lot of stuff you gotta think about as you go through it. So as we get into these more difficult problems, it's really important to pay really close attention to the information you're given. And like I said, look for those keywords that are gonna help you determine which formula to use.